Hi, I'm Ethan Green from nosleeplessnights.com and in this video I'm going to be talking about eight different sleep masks. And yes, in case you're wondering, I am going to wear a sleep mask on my head throughout the duration of this video. I've bought a wide range of them over the last year and I've been testing them out at home while sleeping and napping and also while travelling. I've tried flat sleep masks that are good in all sleeping positions, contoured sleep masks that have space for your eyelids and eyelashes to move and also cooling and weighted sleep masks that are designed for relaxation. The thing is we don't all have the same face shape and factors like the size of your head and the size and shape of your nose can play a key role in how well a sleep mask is going to block out light for you or not. So as well as talking about how effective I found them, I'll also talk about some of the key details to look out for when choosing one, such as the strap design, the material used, how bulky they feel and also how adjustable they are. And hopefully that will help you identify a sleep mask that's going to work well for you. So with that said, let's take a look at the first one, which is the one I'm wearing, the Alaska Bear. The Alaska Bear is currently my personal favourite for one key reason. It has the best balance between light blocking and being comfortable to use in any sleeping position. It doesn't have contours, so if you need space for long eyelashes it might not be the one for you. But if you're not worried about that, and you're a side or front sleeper like me, this is a very effective little sleep mask. So let's take a closer look. When I bought it, it came in a basic plastic wrapper with a little mesh bag that you can fold the mask tightly into. The mask is made from very soft mulberry silk on both sides with some light cotton padding. It feels breathable to use, which is good in hot weather. I tried several other masks that look just like this one, but none felt as soft. The stitching is neat and feels robust, but like most sleep masks, it's hand wash only to keep it in good condition. The strap is made from simple nylon elastic with a thin plastic adjuster. Many sleep masks have this type of adjuster, and I don't find they irritate my skin or snag hair. The adjustable strap means it will fit head sizes of 15.8 to 27.6 inch circumference. When I lie on my back, most of the light is blocked out, though some tiny slithers appear around the nose unless I tighten the strap, but personally I prefer to keep it a bit looser because the light blocking is more than good enough when I close my eyes. As I said, the main benefit for me is that I can lie on my side or front and still have excellent light blocking, and importantly I can change positions without the mask sliding out of place as much as I find with many contoured sleep masks. One final plus point is that it's very cheap. You can get it for under £10 in the UK or under $10 in the US. So overall, I think the balance of price, comfort and light blocking, as well as the flexibility to use it in any sleeping position, makes the Alaska Bear a great choice. Next up we have the Manta. Now this is one of the more expensive sleep masks I've tried, costing between 30 and 35 pounds or dollars. And it's also one of the biggest sleep masks and kind of looks like it belongs more with a superhero outfit than pyjamas. However, it's also a very effective sleep mask comfortable to use with soft material, very deep eye sockets and superb light blocking. So let's take a closer look. It comes in a sturdy box that can be recycled with a mesh carry bag and conveniently it can be machine washed. What makes the Manta unique is that the eye cups can be repositioned to match your facial structure. The cups are made from soft foam with modal fabric on the outside that feels very soft on the skin. At 0.71 inches deep they're the biggest eye cavities I've seen in a sleep mask. The strap is very sturdy with reinforced elastic that's much stronger than the thinner nylon straps of many masks and a microhook fastening system on the back that doesn't snag hair like basic Velcro does. The company says it will suit head circumferences between 15 and 20 inches. I really like the Manta if I'm just having a nap on my back because it blocks out 100% of even the brightest light. I don't need to faff around to find the perfect position either. I just lie down, put it on and the light's gone. It feels very comfortable to wear and the foam cups put minimal pressure on my face. If I lie on my side, I do find some light creeps in around the nose though, which is very common with sleep masks. A more important issue when you're on your side is that the foam feels a bit lumpy on the side of your face. It's not uncomfortable but it is noticeable. And when you lie on your front it's even more noticeable. Overall I think the Manta sleep mask could be an excellent choice for people who sleep on their back and need the most space possible for their eyelids or eyelashes. I think some will be okay with it on their side too, but side or front sleepers are taking a bit of a risk with this one and a simpler mask with less engineering might be better. If you'd like a soft sleep mask that's made of cotton rather than silk, the Mavagel, or Mavagel, not sure about the pronunciation, could be one to try. It also has a bending cartilage around the nose area, which is good for blocking out the slithers of light that tend to creep in. I bought it for under £7 and it came in a well presented cardboard box. However, the mask itself was inside a fabric bag with a plastic wrapper and an extra carry case. So including the Amazon box, that's five layers, which isn't the most eco-friendly. The exterior of the mask is cotton and feels soft, with cotton filler and a thin sponge layer around the outside and that stops it from pressing into your eyes as much as some of the thinner masks do. It's more breathable than the thicker foam masks, but not as breathable as the thin silk ones like the Alaska Bear. The strap is elastic with the standard plastic buckle, and it will fit head sizes from 19 to 29 inches. The stitching is reasonably good, so I imagine it will last a good length of time as long as the elastic isn't stretched to its max a lot. 
Inside the nose piece, there's a thin bendable piece of metal that feels about the width of a paper clip, but it's more flexible. It means you can bend it over your nose to help block out even more light, and it works pretty well. When I'm on my back, I can get nearly 100% light blocking with a Mava gel if I get the nose cartilage in the right place, and that's good enough for me when I have my eyes closed too. When I lie on my side or front, the light blocking can be good too, but I often need to readjust it when I change positions if I'm still awake, otherwise I do notice the light around the nose bouncing off the light grey material. If you have sinus problems or a sensitive nose, you might want to avoid this one because the way the cartilage lies against your skin. Otherwise I think the Mava gel is a good sleep mask if you prefer flatter designs over contoured ones and would rather have cotton than silk on the exterior. Next up we have the Medigrade. Now this one has a contour design with memory foam that creates space for the eyelids and eyelashes to move around. But what I like most about it is that the nose piece is really well designed and it meant that I could get 100% light blocking on my front, my side or my back, which is quite unusual for a sleep mask. However, despite how amazing the light blocking is, I do have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this one. My main problem with this one is that even though it's cheap at under £10 or dollars, it came with loads of bits and pieces that I just didn't use. The recyclable cardboard box and useful carry case are fine, but they're not very good earplugs. The two plastic earplug carry boxes, carabiner, and a bag with five hair clips felt superfluous, especially for me with my lack of long hair. As for the mask, I really like the design and the shape though. It moulds well to my face, and the material that sits over the nose is comfortable and very effective. I couldn't find any information about the exact materials used. It has a soft but slightly synthetic feel, and is less breathable than the silk masks, and it's hand wash only. The strap is a combination of elastic and Velcro and seems robust but if you have a large head, there will be quite a lot of exposed Velcro to potentially get hair caught in. They don't say what head sizes it will fit, but I'd guess it's best for medium to larger sizes. With this one, the light blocking for me was total in all sleep positions. When I'm on my back, it's very comfortable to use, although I do need to tie it fairly tightly to get complete light blocking. It's slightly less comfortable on your side or front because the memory foam and strap creates some bulk on the side of your face. But overall, if you'd like some shallow contours for your eyes and very effective light blocking, the Medigrade Sleep Mask is one to try. It might not be right though if you don't like Velcro, bulkier material when you're on your side, or are environmentally conscious. Next up we have the Barmy. This is the first of two weighted sleep masks I'll be discussing. It weighs 0.8 pounds, and you can actually put it in the freezer for a couple of hours before using it to get a cooling effect. So the combination of cooling and weighted pressure around the eyes is supposed to provide relaxation and perhaps relief from headaches as well as the light blocking. However, I don't really suffer from headaches so I can't comment on that point, but what I can say is that the light blocking with this one is fantastic. So let's take a closer look. The Barmy costs around $30 in the US and even more if you import it to the UK. And it came in a plastic Ziploc bag to keep it clean in the freezer. The exterior material is viscose derived from bamboo on the side that goes over your eyes and polyester around the front and the strap. It feels very soft against the skin, but it's not so breathable because of the microfleece material and all the glass beads on the inside. You can unzip it to remove the inner weighted section and conveniently machine wash the outside part. I like how the beads are sewn into pockets around the edges, so they put pressure around your eyes, but not directly onto them. The strap is part elastic and part micro hooks, and it's designed to fit head sizes from 21 to 24 inch circumference. When I lie on my back, the light blocking is amazing with this one. It easily blocks out 100% of the light with minimal adjusting, However, I found it virtually unusable on my side or front because it's just too lumpy. I found that the cooling effect lasts for around 20 to 30 minutes, but after that it starts to warm up because of all the material. So, like many of the bulkier sleep masks, I think it's really good for short naps on your back, and I found the combination of 100% light blocking and cooling to be excellent, but I wouldn't recommend it for longer periods of sleep, and I also don't think it's good in the seated position because the weight obstructs nasal breathing. Next up we have the iMac Eye Pillow. This one's similar to the Barmy in that it's a weighted sleep mask. It weighs 0.5 pounds instead of 0.8, so it's a bit smaller. And there are a couple of other differences as well. The iMac costs around $15 in the US and over 20 pounds in the UK, so it's less expensive than the Barmy. It came in a recyclable cardboard box and the manufacturer says the plastic ergo beads that create the weight can also be recycled. There's also a simple plastic bag to keep it clean when cooling it in the freezer. I couldn't find a listing of the exact material, which seems to be a common theme with these sleep masks but I believe the exterior material is cotton, and it feels very soft on the skin, which is good. There are some indentations for the eyes, and there's a bit more space for eyelids to move around than the Barmy. The stitching on the inside of the pockets is a bit untidy though, which is a shame, but I like how they've kept the beads around the edges to provide the pressure around the eyes and not directly onto them. The strap is my biggest concern with this mask. It's very thin elastic with no adjuster, but on the plus side it will stretch to fit any head size, I think. Having said that, if you have a larger head, the constant stretching is going to stress the elastic eventually. On my back I found that the light blocking is excellent. 
With a bit of adjusting to find the right position, I can get 100% light blocking, which is great. And on my side, I could also adjust it to get 100% light blocking, which surprised me. It's comfortable on your side too, because you can carefully position it to not have any lumps under your face. On my front though, it's completely unusable because you really feel those lumps. When you've cooled it, I found the cooling effect lasts for around 20 minutes on average, which is nice for a nap, but that's about it. So on balance, if the strap were better, I'd choose the iMac over the Barmy because I prefer the material. The eye cavities are deeper and it costs less, but that flimsy strap is a real concern. So if you only plan on using it from time to time when having a nap or for headache relief perhaps, you might like it. But as a nightly sleep mask, I'm not convinced it's the best choice. This is the Jersey Slumber. It looks very similar to the Alaska Bear. It has the same flat design. It's made from silk, apparently, and it also has a slider buckle. However, the overall quality of the design just didn't strike me as being as good as the Alaska Bear. They say the material is 100% mulberry silk. And although it does feel soft, it's not as smooth or breathable as the Alaska Bear, so I'm not entirely convinced about the quality of the silk. They say you can machine wash it cold though, which is good. The stitching around the edges seems robust, and it has a similar strap design to the Alaska Bear, combining elastic and the slider buckle. The maximum circumference is smaller though, and although they don't list the head sizes it will fit, I imagine it would be somewhere in the 16 to 24 inch range. Oddly, the mask seems to have been cut larger on one side. When lying on my back, for me it was one of the least effective at blocking light. Quite a lot of light came in around the nose, which may be because of my face shape, but the lack of an adjustable nose piece means I just couldn't get a better fit. On my side, I could get better light blocking, and with my eyes closed the light didn't disturb me at all. Unexpectedly, it was actually really good when lying on my front. I was able to get 100% light blocking with some adjusting, and it was very comfortable too. So on balance, this might be a good option for front sleepers who'd like a flat sleep mask that doesn't feel lumpy, but I think I'd still go with the Alaska Bear because of the overall quality. However, it's worth considering if you'd like to try more than one to see which one fits your facial features best. And finally, we come to the Bedtime Bliss. Now this is another contoured sleep mask. The pockets aren't as deep as the Manta, but they are deeper than the Medigrade. This isn't one that I've had the most success with myself though. And I think the lack of flexibility around the nose area means it's one that either will or won't suit your face shape. The Bedtime Bliss isn't expensive, costing under 10 pounds in the UK. And it came in a recyclable box with a tiny carry bag you can roll it tightly into. Unfortunately, it also looks and feels quite cheaply made compared to the previous sleep masks. It looks like the edges have been sealed with heat rather than stitched. And the strap also has minimal stitching to hold it in place, so I'm not sure it's as robust as it could be. They don't list the materials used, but it feels synthetic and not as soft as the previous masks. The elastic strap has quite thick Velcro, and it creates a lump you feel on the back of your head. It's hand wash only as well, and I wouldn't recommend testing it in a washing machine. On my back, the position I find sleep masks most effective usually, I'd say it only blocked out 80% of the light. And even with my eyes closed, I could still feel the light coming through. On my side and front it was a similar story, but at least it was relatively comfortable to use on my side or front because the material is quite thin on the side of the face. So on balance, this might be one to consider if your plan is to try a wide range of contoured sleep masks to find the right one for your face shape, but if you're trying to get it right first time, I think there are higher quality and more effective sleep masks that are equally low cost. And that's it for my review of the sleep masks. I hope that you found this video useful. If you did and you're interested in buying any of them, then you can find a link in the description below to do so. And please also subscribe to my YouTube channel to see more videos and future reviews. Thanks for watching. This is Ethan from No Sleepless Nights.